Welcome to Eat Your Backyard. Ooh, it's a sunny one. I included a thumbnail today from the conditions at the ocean this morning. It's very beautiful. And uh, today we're going to talk about a couple of things I just got off of Amazon. Personally and in Roselli. Also plan on taking a sugar cane cutting and planning that. So I'm going to do at least these th three things in the live stream this morning. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate you. If this video positively impacts one person, then I've met the goal I've got here. Oh my, my, my chickies. And again, I maintain it's not crazy to talk to chickens. They seem to like it. I'll tell you, chickens are, if nothing else, good listeners. We had kind of a busy morning this morning. Kids going, going to their first day of school. Now, you know what? I get distracted by you little sweet hens and then I forget to do my function here. I, I don't make a very good pretend farmer sometimes. All right. Gotta make sure my systems are all set up here. Okay, so I've got this little, this little curved area that I can, that I detach and then close this fenced in back area with that just guides them right in. Oh, thank you so much. Nomi, I appreciate that comment about the beautiful chicken coop. Yeah, I have, I love it too. <laughs> I love it. And just to get distracted here, because that's such a nice com comment. Check this out. I built this thing, and again, as a pretend carpenter. Let's take a look at the chickens from the inside. You see, these nesting boxes are empty because we're going to fill them with hay once these little henny girls get big enough to start producing eggs at the tune of, well, this this coop should produce about 1,200 eggs a year. Hey, you seem pretty calm. Nice and safe and sound in there all night in your snake-proof world. But we'll remove that hardware wire from the entrance to those nesting boxes once they get laying. That's going to be cool. I'll show it. I'll make videos, all that stuff as it's happening, but porcelain egg in the por putting porcelain eggs in the nesting boxes to get them to lay in there is a cool trick. I'm looking forward to trying. We're also getting ready to clip their wings. Something I've never done before and I was new to chickens, so I always like to say clipping their wings is something like trimming their toenails, just and also keeps them from getting into trouble, like flying over the fence. Into the wider world. Okay, so what I do here, before we get started, let's do the chicken ritual. Alright, what I do is let them out into the coop first, and I predict that I see they're all getting off their Oh yeah, you're wondering what's going on. Is I get them into their coop run, and then I open the door and move them straight in. But oh, one other thing. I also bring some black fly larvae. Shout out to my friends at Grub Terra, by the way. If you are looking for black fly larvae. Those are New Jersey black fly larvae. Chicken parade, chicken parade. Hey, how you doing, sweetie? Yeah, you ready? Well, yeah, they, they start pecking at my feet. You gonna peck? Yeah. All right, 
let's go. But first, I'm gonna back you off of this so that I can, yeah, we don't want any, oh, look at the Ponzi started to just gently move them back. New, 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 new. All right, now, open it up. We can just move them all to where they need to be. There's really no need to rush it. I found chickens, look at their wagger tail. See them all wagging their tails? I found chickens operate at chicken speed, and that's fast enough for me. Now, I've learned you don't want them lingering in one spot too long because if you want this path to be chicken manure free, well, it's not gonna stay that way if you let them hang out. So you really wanna get them back into the chicken lair. There you are, there you are, back it up. No rooster, we had a rooster, but I'm not allowed to have a rooster here because of the chicken rules. So we had to give it up to the farm. Sirius Black the rooster. We have videos of that great rooster, but we could not keep it. Now I threw these areca, areca palm seeds down here. And they, they'll eat them. They're, they're something like a banana flavor, areca palm fruit, but they also, now you can see the fruit flies are, uh, thick here that's a drawback for sure especially putting it this close to the front of the cage I may go ahead and move that back but wherever I lay them there's going to be areca palm trees trying to grow so I might just move them out anyhow but I mean they'll eat the fruit flies too but yeah there really are a lot of fruit flies back here now because of that I'll probably get rid of these that's no no bueno hmm have a nice sip of water like to empty out the water in the morning, give them a fresh. They say one of the best things you can do for your, your chickens is to basically always keep a very fresh supply of water, so we do that. We have water for them all over the place, but it doesn't take much just to empty it out in the morning. Yeah. Oh, you see the bag in my hand. I know you do. All right, I'm gonna shut this door. Okay, shut the door. Time for some treats. Actually, I'll get out of the key, out of the run. They're ready to settle in. They'll start foraging for bugs here. And uh, they won't stop until it's time to go in tonight. Really, they'll, they'll sleep and do stuff like that, but. Okay, you like? Mm. Oh yeah, I would, a chicken almost can purr. They make certain sounds like that. <laughs> hmm, let's see here. I'll put some in the front. And if you put them all in one central pile, then the big, biggest birds are gonna get them all. So I like to stretch them out in a nice line. That way there's plenty for everybody. Yeah, pretty cool, isn't it? It's interesting, there's a, a robin back in here and a woodpecker over the weekend that just came and was actually perching up not far from the chickens. <laughs> the chickens were really uh, curious about those other birds. It's very interesting to watch them interact, but. Yep, all right, so let's take a look. Maybe I'll give you just a little bit more. Nah, I'm not going to since you're already comfortably perched. All right, I'll 
I'll show you what I bought. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description. By the way, if you use the links in the description when you go to Amazon, just that helps the channel. I always appreciate it. Oh, wow, those larvae are good, larvae are good fish bait. Interesting. I'll have to try that out. Wow. Yeah, I could see how that would be the case. Okay, so the first thing I bought, and both of these things are excellent chicken food, but they're also great people food, is purslane. And they say there's 5,000 seeds. And they say start the seeds indoors after frost. Yeah, here we can skip a lot of those steps. I'll sow them directly into the ground and just keep them watered, and they'll grow just great. I might put them in some pots first. That way I can strategically place them. They get super healthy in the pots. I've got to go buy two bags of, uh, two bags of, I, I get the jungle growth potting soil that they sell at Lowe's, which I hate to get potting soil at all, really, because you never know what's in it. But um, I still need to because I don't have a soil production system fully functional yet, but it's almost there. If you look over here, these two compost bins, well, they're probably kind of hard to see, but they're behind that pile of mango leaves. I've got two large compost bins and uh, they're making soil now, but it's going to be a little while before I have, I'm self-sufficient. So the purslane grows wild and it's a succulent and it tastes something like iceberg lettuce, better though, more sweet. Uh, it's a really, really great vegetable to eat but it's also just adored by the chickens. Now this variety you get that I got is a type that is much larger leaf than the wild version. But I use the, I grow the wild version everywhere. It grows itself, which is why I love it so much. It's a succulent, natural, you know, I guess you could call it weed, but a plant that grows in, I hesitate to call something so useful. Dandelions. Yeah, I'm, I grow dandelions as well for the for the chickens and the bunnies, both. But look, this is the wild purslane and just grew here. Now, if I don't, if I don't, you know, pull the root out, which I want to, if I don't pull the root out, it's going to grow back. Which is really what I want. But uh, this variety, just a little bit smaller leaf, but I would claim, even though it's a smaller width of leaf, that it is a thicker leaf. So you may not actually lose much when you go with this wild version, but it's really the reason I bought the seeds is it's about the convenience of having 5,000 seeds, which I'm not exactly sure how to get the seeds from this. I know they're the little yellow flowers is probably where they are. They just naturally, I've never had to plant purslane because it just grows everywhere. Oh, look, they know. They can see it in my hand. All right, now let's see here. This will be so fast that I want to not miss it. Mm, took the whole thing. All right, let's make sure you each get one of these. One for you. You come on, Chicken Joe. Oh, you can get a second one. You chick chick. Yeah, they love it. So it's a nice treat for the chickens. It's also a nice salad. So the purslane uh, that was like five dollars. You know, I've never seen it sold at the you know, department store, brick and mortar. So anyway, I just decided to grab it. And then, and this is just going to be a big one for yield in my yard. Uh, red roselli is the other one. Now the red roselli is a type of hibiscus that forms, a, if you see those little red, those red things in the picture there, forms those red, what they call calyxes. And the petals taste just like cranberries, like fresh cranberry 
delicious flavor. And uh, the stalk can be used for cordage and stuff. It's very, very useful plant. And the leaves are really actually very tasty and zesty and uh, they're edible too. And uh, I had a whole bunch that I planted. I bought a pack like this and it had nearly from this company, the Palm Beach Seed Company. Shout out, hey, Palm Beach Seed Company, give me a call. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, comment down in the, the comments because this, this has been an excellent one. And I'm happy to tell you that almost, I'd say 100% of the seeds germinated last pack I got. So looking forward to that again. But the problem that I encountered was the deliciousness of the roselli caused my chickens to consume almost every single one of them down to nub. So they just ate them up. They loved the roselli, which is great because once I, now that I have the chickens contained, so to speak, we can enjoy it. There was one that survived the onslaught of chicken consumption. I'll show it to you. It just kind of hid behind the pigeon pea. This one survived. And uh, you can see it's doing quite well. Beautiful, beautiful leaves. And the redness of the stalk, really apparent. I look like every weed in my yard has become really just fresh hay. They love the crabgrass. This variety of crabgrass is for sure one of their favorite things to eat. Oh, sorry, you're all up on your roosting bars. I mean to disturb the party, but here you go. Yeah, they'll come by and peck at that throughout the day. And also spread the seeds so that they sprout, and then they'll eat those sprouts as soon as they pop up. But this red roselli has been really, really easy to grow. Uh, they say plant seeds a half inch below the soil. I'd say that's a great way to go. Three to five days. Yeah, max three to five days. They sprout so fast I couldn't believe it. And by the way, the other cool thing about the roselli, and I'm going to put these back in my pocket because I'm going to plant these later. Just got to get that potting soil. I'm going to make some videos about that when I plant them so you can track the growth and see how easy. This is $10 worth of seeds here, like $10 or $12 worth of seeds. So much bounty you can get out of ten dollars but i'll make some videos about you know how we incorporate this stuff into the yard all right now the one other thing that i promised was to go and get a sugarcane cutting and in order to do that i'm gonna have to back up this Okay, I'm gonna take a sugar cane cutting because I want to expand the sugar cane and I have three varieties now growing. I used to have more. But uh, yeah, the sugar cane has been just a wonderful thing in the yard. You can see this one. This is a green sugar cane. And uh, as you can see, it's quite healthy. Sugar cane takes almost nothing no know how to grow and uh, I'm trying to do this kind of one-handed but there we go but uh, yeah really all you have to do is bury it and as you can see on this one it's got roots already well established so this is a good one it's really too small to be great for for eating and by the way if you're going to eat sugarcane you need a sugarcane peeler I need to buy one of those actually find them for not much money oops I may have to put this down Let's see if I can do that okay oh, I farmed it <laughs> that was not pretty but it got done all right there it is nice cutting and this part that is the end of it is just going to be practically 
worthless. This it makes great chop and drop, by the way. See, I just pile it up, all the leaves. That's the key to turning this stuff into goodness. Just pile it up. You want a thick layer, but uh, this does have little little hairs, little irritating hairs on the seam. I'll see if I can show you. You want to be kind of careful of all along here are ir irritating hairs. So I'm just going to leave that there to turn brown a little bit. Come get it with the I'll come get it with the gloves on later. I don't really feel like getting those hairs in my fingers. However, this part, no hairs at all. You could eat this just fine. But this is a great little seed, what they call seed cane, seed sugar cane. Ready to go. How many plants is this? Well, it's as many plants as there are nodes. <clears throat> so, obviously, way, way, way too much. In no time. You can see why sugarcane farming could be so massive is that you could just create a sugarcane grove in your backyard that would be pretty substantial in no time. And I'm just going to leave this out under the tree. I'll come back and plant that later, but I'll demonstrate just on, on one, you know, kind of what you do. So you could, you can leave it two or three nodes, but this is the general process I use. Okay. This works pretty well. And that's just to take, take a node with two. There we go. Ooh, that's a nice one. Yeah, with two nodes on it. And you want to feel to make sure that the little buds that are on the one side, opposing sides, there's one, there's one, that they're, they're firm. If they're soft, that means that the bud is dead and it's not going to grow, usually. And then you can see this one's got some nice little white roots on it. So this is going to be a great one to grow. And, uh... One place that I've been thinking I would like more is along this fence here. This is a hot area and every little bit of green growing tall will help. So I think you can see I've got sugarcane already planted here, but I think I'm gonna plant even more. Yeah. Okay. this thing I probably don't want it next to this song of India or at least too tight into that I want it behind these two pigeon peas here's what I'm gonna do okay and I'll kind of make it so that the buds are on either side you see there's the bud and there's the bud so I just lay it flat you don't need this very deep at all just loosely cover it that's almost guaranteed to grow and I'll have another green sugar cane plant there now I don't want to go Oh, hear those? Those are screecher parrots. <laughs> uh, yes, I have dragon fruit growing. Uh, I can show you some dragon fruit that I've got growing. But what I want to do along here is, in addition to having the green, is to have red, yellow, maybe a black or a purple. Uh, sugar canes. I still need to reacquire those varieties. At one point, I had those. Oh yeah, those green screecher parrots. It's funny, they're very loud. They fly in flocks. Oh, there's a robin up there too. It's like an Autobahn thing right in the backyard all the time. But yeah, the, the sugar can I just think is a, a good way to go. Now, that, to really process it, what you're going to need is a juicer. I don't know, if, other than chewing it, you can juice it to get the sugar out. You know, I think those are the two things you use, other than the chop and drop part, which I'm also using it for. But, uh, yeah, dragon fruit. And I always like to plant clumps of dragon fruit, so you'll see there'll be like you know, four or five different dragon fruits growing up. I'm going to grow it up this soft-tipped yucca, which also is full of petals right now, by the way. Keep checking the old banana patch. Yeah, 
not ripe yet. Not quite yet. A little bit of time. Ooh, happy to see the old grapefruit tree starting to show some vigor. This grapefruit citrus in my yard being very salty, very windy, close to the ocean, it's a big challenge. But grapefruit is strong enough that if you give it enough time, it's going to grow through just about anything. And uh, it's given it another go. It already tried to leaf like three different times and most of the leaves just fell off or turned into this kind of thing. Yeah, there you go, yeah, classic. But it just keeps powering through. And look, there you go. Yeah, the banana heart. I, I keep wanting to try that. It's just, it seems like it would be so gross, but I've had so many people tell me it's great. So I, I think I need to do it. It's about like boiling it for the right way. The right way. Check out all, all these little sprouts. So this grapefruit tree is really finally showing some vigor. And also very happy to report soursop success. Initially soursop success. And this is the kind of thing that happens in my yard. I know my yard from growing things in it for so long. You know, we put these trees and plants out here and they sometimes just get whacked hard by the, well, this was the sun, the salt, mostly, which whacked it. You can see that's not a good look. And some leaves falling off but it quickly regrew leaves that are suited to be in this environment. I can tell they don't have brown tips, etc. So stoked on that. This is all new within the last two weeks. So I'm expecting soursop. I planted them intentionally in two different places. Oh, check out this little tamarind tree too. Tamarind from a seed, great. Fun experiment to do. But here's the other soursop that I planted. And uh, same thing, leaf trauma. <laughs> but this one, being in a much more shaded location, I think is the reason it just is growing much slower. But I could, and you know, what's interesting on this is I see that on the tip of this new growth, it is brown. That's alarming. Certainly, because you don't want to see that. You know, it's already having problems. But we'll see. We'll see. It looks like that one is a little brown too, which could mean that it's some kind of sprinkler issue that's affecting it, meaning the salt's getting on the leaves and burning them still. But I really thought that would have happened over uh, with this one too, if that was the case. So we'll just have to wait and see. To me, that's one of the fun parts of growing stuff is you just get to figure it out. Now, when I saw these little soursops sitting at Lowe's, I couldn't grab them fast enough and I had to control myself not to get more than two and actually now I feel some sense of regret not getting more than two now that I know they're going to grow but it could be two things that just die no matter what I do with them in my yard uh, lychee did that certainly for me uh, avocado did that for me but I, I could now I think incorporate both of those this same way we're putting it in different areas and, and getting it to go but the point is that yeah this is a fun part of backyard gardening now i'm really trying to focus on a lot of understory stuff now like you can see growing some things under the canopy but also managing the canopy so that it is not blocking out all the sunlight which can easily happen but uh, all of these leaves oh the soursop leaves are used for medicinal purposes oh that's really cool i'm gonna have to look that up meaning figure out what medicinals it can do for me <laughs> I feel like eating one right now. <laughs> yeah, so managing the canopy is uh, very important. And I actually made a video I'm going to release next week on Wednesday night. But by the way, check out the premiere Wednesday evenings. Every Wednesday evening, a premiere video, live premiere. So I'll be on the chat, etc see this power line this mango tree was growing over it it's now managed and the reason is and and you can see that it's uh, actually managed all the way through so there's nowhere that it's even close and that's because hurricanes are on the way there's 
actually this Friday, we're supposed to start getting some waves from the first tropical system. I looked at the models and they didn't look like any of them had it going that strong in terms of wind, but it could be 50, 60 mile an hour winds if it came right over us maybe, or, or, or that forecast changes. So now's the time to prepare. I've already got a plan in place for what I'm gonna do with the chickens. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that comment. Yeah, I love it. We, we love the garden. This has been a work in progress for 20 years and it's at a zenith. Uh, hopefully it, this yard, this garden, you know, the Eat Your Backyard channel will just serve as an example to people of what you can do simply, easily that really has a positive effect on your life. Like I think you know, you're missing out potentially on something really meaningful if you don't. Yeah, it's a great stress reliever. It's a great way to just connect with simple things that serve you. It sounds like a, a strange thing to say, but man, that is important. Just connect with simple things that serve you and that show you everything's doing great hey somali flame good to see you i appreciate it. yeah these little chicky dudes are going to be loving the two things i just got in the mail <laughs> the purslane and the roselli i know they all already do love it but just the idea of feeding it to them already is making me happy and eating it myself you know a cool thing about the a really cool thing about the red roselli, if, in case you didn't know, is that uh, besides the fact that it's an edible hibiscus that tastes like a cranberry, if that wasn't cool enough. Oh, look at that. Look at that. The rare barred rock chicken feather. Yeah, Peter, I'm going to answer that question for sure. Great question, by the way. So red roselli, yeah. The, the other thing that it has is, okay, so these little flowers that you see in this picture hopefully those little red calyxes that that uh, form up that's you eat the petals off of those but the inside part which is also where the seeds are that you can harvest and grow uh, I recommend you do that after this pack I don't think I'll need to ever buy them again if I just keep growing them but the pectin it is filled with pectin the center part of this is filled with pectin and if you make jams or preserves or anything like that, you know that pectin is something you typically go buy at the grocery store to add to make that jelliness. You never need to buy pectin again if you have a red roselli because these are super pectin rich, which is why you can just take these calyxes and throw them in and, and uh, saute them up sort of and make a cranberry jam preserve instantly just by, by cooking them in a little bit of water and re reducing them. So really cool really cool thing man i'm saying everybody who can watch this video right now i'll have to remember to put a link here so you can click on the link in the description go get you some red roselli from palm beach seed company and i can i'm willing to endorse this because i've already bought a pack from palm beach seed company and they were just super high quality like i said 100 percent germination rate you just saw the plant that grew from it and we i would have had 10 others if it wasn't for the fact that they were so delicious to these chickens. Yeah, I know. I know. Chickens got to do what a chicken's got to do. That's why we call them the chicky doos. Chicky does what chicky does. Oh, interesting thing yesterday, chicken behavior. These little uh, Rhode Island red hybrids are smaller sized chickens even though they produce a large egg which is kind of a concern because they can become egg bound meaning they, can, they uh, can't lay their egg and that cause them to die so anyway but the point is that they're littler chickens and I think they'll be fine because we're gonna keep them in healthy condition but a chicken lives for about four years maximum some of them live about two years. I think these, actually, these uh, Rhode Island Reds only live for like two and a half years, so they're not that long-lived of a chicken. It's kind of interesting. But they're smaller, a little bit smaller, and you can see the, the size of this chicken compared to the Bard Rock, Plymouth Rock chickens, 
which is both of these are heritage breeds, meaning old American chicken breeds. And uh, but yeah, the Barred Rocks are much bigger. But the thing is, these Rhode Island Reds, even though they're smaller, they can maintain their place in the pecking order because they're not pushovers. <laughs> That's the problem. If you get some of these, you get like a little bit more assertive type of breed with a less assertive breed. You can have issues, chicken issues. They got to know where they fit into the pecking order. And uh, it's funny because the barred rocks are definitely top hens here, but the little, the little uh, Rhode Island Reds do not relent. They're right in there and assertive with them. Look, look at that. She's gonna go in and oops, see that she got backed away. <laughs> it's so interesting. But I saw yesterday that one of the Rhode Island Reds bit onto the back of the neck of Ponzi that this big hen here and like tried to like you could see he was trying to like bite, like bite down hard on her neck and Ponzi made this honking sound which she makes and kind of went away and I thought okay there you go yeah not gonna get pushed around by the Ponzi hen not that she's a, a bully hen or anything she's just you know large and in charge but these hens get along really, really well together. And yeah, throughout the day, of course, they're testing their position, but really very gentle. I mean, I can't believe how gentle these Rhode Island Reds, it's actually, they're a cross between a Rhode Island Red White and a Rhode Island Red that makes this. And they're, they're actually borderline what they call Bantam chickens, which is the smaller size chicken. They certainly lead a very interesting life back here in terms of chicken world. They've got ample supplies of bugs, plenty of places to go take dust baths. They're just very well adjusted. And I can tell you absolutely that the cost of feeding these hens, as soon as I started to free range them, went down dramatically. Free range just in this back area is what I mean. And you know, they're eating bugs back here the whole time. I'm throwing back compost back in here um, like I said crabgrass weeds purslane mulberry branches whatever and they just mow it down and I just see their food food level uh, just creep down as opposed to just fly down because they, they would just go up there and be always eating and now I, they get back in their coop in the evenings and I don't even see them really going up and eating from the food much like they're not obsessed with it like they were hungry so they're getting adequately adequately uh, fed and they'll just naturally feed on all this nutritious stuff. And then of course I got my wife back here feeding them stale hot dog buns and lettuce and all of our food scraps as well. So they get a pretty good supply of food scraps. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna show you is this massive pile of mango branches that resulted from that hurricane preparedness which is not over by the way preparing for the hurricane in my yard i hope you'll check out that video it has the whole process <laughs> i avoided electrocution that's the summary somehow but this is the result all these mango branches look at all those mango branches now these this is not much of a loss meaning fruit wise because these are all branches I've had to continuously trim back that haven't been fruiting because they've been right up near the power branches. I don't want fruit near the power branches anyway. So what I do is uh, I take these cuttings and I lay them back in here, stack them up, and just let them rest. And over the course of the next couple of weeks, every one of those leaves is gonna drop onto the ground all on its own. And it makes it very easy. Then I can just rake them up and then place them in these compost bins. The compost bins are actually getting Kind of full but every time i say that they seem to drop down another level so they just keep compressing but you can see these mango leaves in here already starting i had some of the smaller ones i just tossed on top and the more you can throw in there the, the better but okay so now on to the question i did not forget from peter peter good question he says living in florida how do you get good healthy sto soil to start vegetables and fruit Okay, so this is the answer to that question, that comment, thank you. You make your own. 
and then you continuously enrich your soil with things like compost, but also very importantly, wood chips the carbon feed because this this soil is a lot like sand even you can see back in here it's just sand so yeah how do you enrich it you just got to continuously enrich it you got to make your own process here and what I'm noticing is I have more than enough uh, leaf matter to do this I just got to create the system so I just use this simple system these are just coiled and I talk about these all the time and I don't think it's because I'm actually I'm getting ready to put a third one in uh, I think this is revolutionary. <laughs> I didn't invent it. I'm just, it's a, such a simple approach. You just uncoil a, a, you know, animal wire spool that you get at any department store that sells animal wire and uh, start stacking stuff in there. And then when you need to flip the compost, turn it over, because you want to do that eventually, just pull it off and put it somewhere new and then just pitchfork it in. So it's really, really easy. Now look at how much soil I've got here. I don't know how many, you know, how many bags of soil that is at, uh, you know, I'm about to go buy two bags of soil because this process isn't done yet. But, uh, you know, like in the meantime, I'll, I enrich with bags of soil, low growth stuff because at Lowe's, but that into your yard, you don't know what's in it. I'd like, I want to have a system that's as closed as possible. That way I know what's going in, but this is, yeah, well on its way. And you can see almost the, you, you can see the layers as it goes down. But uh, there's layers of chicken bedding and then all the way down to the bottom where it's kind of basically already just turning into soil. But in the middle, it'll be like that too. I can shovel this compost straight into the, straight into the, uh, chicken coop chicken run they'll eat it up as well so that's yeah the, this has chicken bedding as you can see there chicken bedding with chicken manure all in it uh, spread throughout so this the richness and nutrient content of this soil is going to be outstanding and again it's also got the wood in it the chicken bedding is wood but also i put a lot of woody stuff in there in addition to leaves so it gets a real good mix because you need that carbon in your in your composter as well. It's like I think of it like making a cake, stew, soup. But yeah, and then this racer. stuff. Oh, we got a black racer. Yep. Where is it? Where is it? Right here. Oh wow. Cool. Just sunning himself. It's a beautiful snake. Yeah, I don't know how many black racers we have living back here, but you know, quite a quite a few. Isn't that pretty? Now they are very fast. They're actually. Um, what do they call it? Like, what's the wrap? I forget the name of it, but they're the they're kind of snake that strikes very fast, and they actually will stand up and kind of almost like give you that cobra deal, and they they'll definitely bite. They these are biters for sure, but they're not venomous. And um, yeah, I see I see these black racers slithering by the chickens all the time, and that you know they have no interest in the chickens, obviously, but. Um, too small but you know the inclination might be to hit this guy with a shovel or something and that would be a mistake a very big mistake because these are very important the worst thing that can happen is you'll get tagged on the hand and have a great story and that would happen probably if you go mess with it but I love seeing these creatures in the yard we have turtles too <laughs> Yeah, that's Florida. He picked a good spot to sun himself. Right, chickies? You sweet chickies.
Look how healthy they look. I really think it's from the rich diet they get, you know, to include all the black fly larvae that we feed them. <laughs> but it's supposed to make their feathers, you know, really healthy and they really do look healthy. I can't believe how beautiful they look. My wife was saying yesterday, it's really great that we got two different types, the way that they, you know, the way that they behave, but also the way that they look. It's just, it's made a much more rich experience. And I always like to also say that when we got these hens, there were pullets at Tractor Supply for 50 cents a piece. <laughs> So it's not that expensive to get the chickens. Now, hey, if I didn't have, uh, you know, chicken restrictions, I might have just picked up some pullets. But no, I had it much more dialed in. Look, but they were they were good uh, type of bird. I forget the type it was. But anyway, yeah, lots of varieties. Have you heard of the Easter egger chicken? Oh yeah, I'm on. I'm in Central Florida on the East Coast, Brevard County. Peter? Have you heard of the Easter Egger chicken? The Easter Egger. That's an actual chicken breed that produces eggs of different colors. <laughs> like a, like Dr. Seuss book or something? Yeah. Easter Egger. Green eggs, blue eggs, brown eggs, orange eggs, I think. Well, that's the thing. Well, all right. What a great way to start the day. I appreciate everybody jumping on the live stream. If you would, please give me a thumbs up. That helps me to know this is the kind of content that people get a benefit from. Oh, and don't forget, there's every time we have a hurricane, we write somewhere with a Sharpie. And uh, Hurricane Dorian 2019. We could certainly have another one. Oh, good. Hold on. I have carbon in the compost. Do you have any nitrogen? Yes, and that's through the, the leaves, through the green matter. That's where we're getting most of the nitrogen. Yeah, which we're about ready to pump that nitrogen in there. I guess I could always get a pH tester out. Oh, you're over in Sarasota County, West Coast. Nice. Well, hey, I hope you jump back on the streams with us. I try to do these in the mornings here and there, but certainly I stream every, uh, usually every Saturday, Sunday morning. We have uh, shorts that come out daily now, well, usually about one minute shorts, to try to make them topical and interesting and a variety of things now. And then uh, every Wednesday evening, we do a premiere release of a longer form video. This, this week, it is actually directly related to what we were talking about here. It's making compost gold using chicken bedding. So I show you the whole process of, um, that I use, you know, to get from the, uh, from the hen house to the compost situation in quick order. It's a really simple system. I, I love to make these little simple systems and, uh, Stoked you're on for the ride. Thanks for watching Eat Your Backyard. Have a great day. Maybe plant some roselli.